Are there any questions? Anyone? Stuart, I have a question, Bob Sink. Yes, Bob. I really understand when you talk about that uh, moving before the class disturbs the class. Could you elaborate more about that? Uh, what is um, those things that we may not understand about how we're just disturbing? The things that we don't understand about what? About uh, disturbing the class. Well, uh, there's nothing to understand really, you know? I mean, if people are fidgeting, moving, if they're not sitting still, if they're not focused, the whole class goes chaotic. And that's all I complain about for the, as I said, the 8 billionth time. Uh, people have to be focused. You know, I know everybody is sitting in their own bedroom, living room, wherever you're sitting, but there are 20 some odd people here, each one sitting and focused and doing meditation. And if you are scratching your nose, you're looking around, you're playing with your computer, whatever you happen to be doing, it not only disrupts it for you, but it really just changes the whole vibration of the meditation class. And I think out of respect for everybody sitting here working as deeply and as hard on themselves as they are, people have to finally understand that. They have to understand that it is, you know, that they are responsible not only for their own inner work, but for truly making sure that everyone else that's in this meditation benefits from it. I mean, I don't know what other people teach and people move and fidget. And I know if you sat in Rudy's class, you started fidgeting, boy. I mean, uh, there was hell to pay. I mean it. Much worse than what I do, trust me. <laughs> he was really serious about that. And I'm serious about that too. I mean, because I understand that it truly disrupts the whole energy of the meditation class. If people are fidgeting, playing with their computers, this and that, get everything ready before you sit down and meditate. Don't come in two minutes before the class where everybody's trying to get focused and, and start playing around with your computer. It's not fair to yourself and to everybody else. And I don't want to be a hard ass. You know, it's not my nature to be a hard ass, or it used to be, not anymore. But I, I, I'm just asking this from people out of respect for the fact that everyone that is here is supposed to be here because they want a spiritual life. And everybody has to respect that, focus, get centered in themselves. You know, even if people leave the class and come back, you know, and I see their name up there, I have to disrupt the class in order to let them in. Same way if people come late, I have to disrupt the class to let them in. So if people came three minutes earlier, I'm sure all the people that come late can manage to come three minutes earlier, you know? And, you know, again, I don't want to be a hard ass about these things, but uh, I think on such a basic fundamental level, this kind of a Discipline is essential. I mean, I know if you go to one of these Zen classes, you know, you can sit for 12 hours. The exercise, you got to sit for 12 hours without moving. And if you move, they hit you over the head with a stick. And these Zazen things, you know, so and this is not fanatical here. This is just saying be disciplined, respect the class, respect everybody that's in the class. And please don't move, it, you know, as I, at least I must have at least said that 8 billion times already. <laughs> I'm tired of saying it. <laughs> Fix your computer, get your computer working, 
five minutes before the class starts. Come a little bit earlier if you have to futz, or, futz around with your computer to get it right. Come five minutes earlier, get it right. When the class starts, be focused. Again, I don't know what other people teach. I don't go to their classes. There are a lot of people that teach Rudy's work. And I don't know if people fidget and move and do this and that in the class. It's not my business what goes on in other people. But I know what I learned from Rudy. And I remember Rudy also the eight billion time telling people to stop moving. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? I hope that's clear to not only you, Bob, but to everybody, you know? I want people to benefit as profoundly as they can possibly benefit from this meditation. It's not easy to do. It takes a tremendous commitment to be able to come here and do this X number of times a week. And I want people to benefit 100% from it. And it's not possible if people are fidgeting and moving and playing with their computer and this and that and, you know, whatever, you know. Stuart, I have uh, an additional question on this topic. What are some good inner focusing techniques we can do before we even log in? Well, the most important one is getting your focus of attention in the chakra below the navel. If you, if your mind is focused there, you will never have to move. There'll be bombs going on off on the street you're living in, and you can sit completely detached from it. That's the first thing. You could use the mantra so hum to quiet the mind, to relax yourself. You could spend a minute just letting your arms drop at your side and getting rid of negative psychic tension. I mean, there are things you can do, you know? I mean, uh, and all of these things make the class deeper for each and every person that does them. Most important of all is bringing the focus point of your attention to the chakra below the navel. Because once your mind is focused there, it's going to get quiet. And a lot of the fidgeting is going to stop. Because most of that fidgeting is just the mind being chaotic, the emotions being chaotic. And that's what I would suggest doing, listening to your breathing. Inhalation, exhalation, that'll get you calm, quiet. And using every class to build a system inside yourself that's strong enough to stay quiet and balanced no matter what you do during the day. And no matter what is going on in your life during the day, you can stay quiet and balanced. Stuart, this is Brad as a follow-up. How do you focus sensations that are th flowing through your body, either in your legs or your arms, that would want to have you move? I mean, can I honestly, Brad, those sensations are a byproduct of a noisy mind. They're a byproduct of your tension inside, emotion, sexual energy. And you can, with your will, draw all of that energy to the chakra below the navel and use it to develop chi. I mean, honestly, I mean, look, I'm not a martial artist. I never studied it, or, but that's what it's all about. You know, getting that balance, developing chi, being completely centered in the moment. And this meditation in its own strange way is like a martial art that you can draw all of that discomfort, you can bring it into the chakra below the navel 
And you can do that by build by first of all getting your mind focused there, where you can detach yourself from all that discomfort. You can have a pain. I mean, I've had a I hurt my rib about you know a month ago, three weeks doing exercise, and I was rowing. I got into rowing and I hurt my rib. And I still have pain there, but it never interferes in my class. Ever. In fact, the pain diminishes to almost not even feeling anything because I am centered in the chakra below the navel and I can draw that pain there and it becomes chi. It also allows you to heal a lot quicker from different afflictions that people have. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, that's just building chi. The more powerful your chi is inside, the less distractions you're going to have in your body. Also, the quicker you can heal yourself from things. Because, you know, we get a, we get a, a you know, we, we hurt our finger or thumb or my rib, and all your attention goes there, and the mind just feeds the pain, and the pain gets bigger. But if your mind is focused in the navel below the chakra, you know, you're not going to feed the pain and the pain will begin to diminish. And these are really important things for everyone to learn because we all have pain. I mean, anybody in this group that doesn't have pain, raise your hand. I'm sure nobody's going to raise their hand. But when you have that focus, you can detach yourself from the pain. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I mean, I don't really like to talk about this kind of focus and don't move and you begin to feel like a taskmaster. You know, I'm walking around here with a ruler smacking people on their hands because they're moving. But sometimes you got to talk about it because a lot of people do it, you know. Another thing you should do before the class starts is make sure that you're lit well. Because I mean, like Kerry, I can barely see you. You know, you're just dark. Don't do. Don't fix it now, okay? <laughs> don't fix it now. But for the next class, I mean, all of these things are preparation to do deep inner work. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Stuart, you once said to me, <clears throat> try to get a little more um, service to God. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, Shakur, you know, you're, you're in another, I, I can't see you, you know, so just repeat the question. You, you once said to me, try to get a little more service to God. How you get over the what service to God? You said, try to get a little more service to God. Like to be of service. How to be of service to God? 
Yes. Or there's a simple thing in this meditation practice called gratitude. Gratitude. And gratitude shouldn't be lip service. It should really be contributing something, you know, to, uh, to what's helping you have a spiritual life. And if you have that gratitude inside you, you know, you will find a way to contribute. You will find a way to say, thank you. And I don't mean lip service gratitude. That doesn't go anywhere. It has to be through your actions, what you're willing to do, to give, to contribute, to make it possible for the situation maybe to grow. That's gratitude. It's giving. It's giving unconditionally. And why are you giving unconditionally? Because you are getting what you need to get to have a spiritual life. Now, this is also something that people don't understand because so many people think that this meditation is kind of coming to them. And it's really not. You have to earn it. I earned it. Go to Denton, Texas for three weeks. I was nine years there. I earned it. Helping Rudy in so many different projects, whatever I can contribute. You know? But lip service gratitude does not create a spiritual life. But getting big enough to truly, through your activity, through, you know, like donations and this and that, you know? And the sheer gratitude is the way that you really learn how to have service in the world. Thank you. And you don't do that for me. You do that because you need to grow. You need to learn how to give unconditionally in the world, receive unconditionally in the world. How to function on a very high level of what it means to be human. I mean, you know, I ask people to make donations. There are many of you that never do, you know. I don't, under, quite frankly, can't understand how anyone can't afford $5 for one of these classes. I mean, I think that in itself is absurdity. It's absurdity. That in itself tells me people think what goes on here is coming to them and they're not willing to contribute something. And that $5 is certainly not going to change my life, but it will change their life. Showing them they can something. I'll never forget. I was standing in Rudy's store, right? And a woman came in with this huge bouquet of flowers and gave it to him. And he gave it back to her and told her he will not be bought. And he doesn't want these flowers because they're trying to bribe him into doing something that he doesn't think is real. And I'll never forget, 10 minutes after this, some young guy came in with a bag of M&Ms. And it was like Rudy was given the crown jewels. He hugged him, he thanked him, he was handing out M&Ms to everybody around him. You know, and I said, Rudy, why? He said, it comes from his heart. It comes from his heart. He is making an effort to give me something and saying, thank you with gratitude. I mean, I once had a student in Denton, Texas. I'll never forget this, you know, who was very rich. And he came and he offered me a $10,000 donation to the ashram. And I said to him, look, I'll tell you what, I'll take the donation if you take a rake and rake up some leaves on the front yard. And he refused to do it. He got insulted. I'll never forget that. I said, oh, fuck you and your money, you know? If you can't do something basic <laughs> like that, your money, you're trying to buy, buy your way into heaven? You know, I, this true story.
So it's, it's not the money, it's getting big enough to say, how can I do something to help out? That's all. And it could be a bag of M&Ms, you know? It could be anything that comes from the heart that says, thank you, I'm grateful. And that builds to one day you become literally a servant of God, doing unconditionally what you have to do on the earth to work out your karma and to really serve God. You know, uh, you know, in Tibetan Buddhism, the bodhisattvas come back here to help sentient beings. Well, that's their service. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? And the whole thing really begins with gratitude. Honest, true, profound, internal gratitude. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, there will be a meditation class on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. God bless you all. Sorry, I was a little maybe tough on everybody today, but what the hell? <laughs> you gotta do it sometimes. So God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank See you, everybody sir. on Wednesday. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Come on. Here, she's doing it.